Okay, welcome everyone to our uh, property subcommittee meeting on the uh, topic is to uh, discuss <coughs> our options for the uh, e building, options and plans. Continued discussion. Um, we have Teats Architects attending and school officials and the subcommittee members. Um, I guess I'll hand it over to Kevin. Just jump right in. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I sent an agenda um, everyone <coughs> and uh, also a program. And there were some questions kind of identified in the program. You know, we did receive the, uh, um, the program description of the center, so thank you for everyone for putting that together. Um, based on our original program, I just wanted to kind of confirm some of the things that were either deleted or wanted to make sure that we had everything complete so that we can kind of move to the next steps of, of you know, starting to develop and make more plans for development. Okay. Contract progress. Deb and I were talking about this. I know the contract has been going through the <coughs> hierarchy of bureaucracy within the city. So I know that's the process. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody you else. Know. Oh, okay. I just want to confirm that. Okay, so it's not uh, signed off yet. It's all working through the system still. I have to confirm with Chris to see at what stage. Uh, I do know I received the paperwork. I didn't sign up on it. Uh, after me, it goes to. Okay. And you're okay with that, Kevin, to move forward? Yeah, we're not going to stop progress. Uh, okay. okay. Trust that you're going forward. going forward. All right. Um, the schedule, I do have a, a it's uh, basically the same as last week that we, we, we did push off this meeting by the week, so we just adjusted the schedule to show that. So we're planning on maintaining our basic schedule um, that we had. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more about the project funding, just to make sure that we're kind of on the right path here. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we had a discussion at the last meeting about, you know, possible funding from the MSBA. And, you know, based on my knowledge of how they work, you know, the process usually goes through this, um, you know, you apply for their assistance and um, you know, they, they develop a study under their you know kind of oversight and I don't know I guess how do you see that going because like you have to you have to submit a, like a statement of interest and it you know requires this paperwork to be done and submitted and then they accept you into their program or not but I don't want to I don't want to like you know, stop this process, but I also don't want to like waste time and money if it's you know not going to be useful. To. So I just want to kind of understand a little bit better, you know, where I guess we are going with all this. Yep. So I think that's a worthy discussion that we need to have as a team right now before we move on to the next steps. From my perspective, for us to pursue MSBA and to get a project is not in the school's best interest at this point. Uh, as you mentioned, Kevin, it's a, it's a long process. And uh, a couple of variables at, at play. One is that we have another major building need at some point, and I would say relatively near future, that we have to see how to tackle this. Which would, there's no way around that project without MSP, which then involves the city as well and some other entities. The other issue that came, came to light within the last week or so, and I was talking to Joe about it, some of our funding sources right now are leading at grants from the state. One that we just submitted a couple weeks ago. Uh, I received notice from the state 
that uh, they received 15 applications for this particular grant. It's a skills capital grant where 30% of the grant we can apply towards renovations. So that's where we'll work on our student horticulture and animal science. Uh, we see word that the state has been approached by MSBA to see if the applications involved MSBA or not. Uh, so the superintendents who submitted the proposals we had to respond if we were using MSBA or not. If we were, we have to sort of talk about that whole process. Seems to me that those who are going to rise to the cream of the crop for eligibility around the grants are projects that are not involving MSBA. So my point is, uh, by not pursuing MSBA in this particular project, we are able to tap into the available grant we just submitted. More importantly, there's a grant coming out later in the summer, the same skills got the grant, but more money. And 70% of that particular grant can be applied to, towards renovation and construction costs. So it's, do we throw away the grants because we want to use MSBA? By using MSBA, we've got a bigger project here, but then it really handcuffs us for a larger building project than we have it. Or do we say, can we go down this road without MSBA involvement, use insurance money, grant money, internal money uh, to tackle grants that we're not going to build the Taj Mahal, unfortunately, uh, but can we try to solve the immediate problem and maintain the SBA eligibility for the big project effort. That's where I'm at today. So, I need to, to the No, that, that's, uh, uh, that's a re great recap. Thank you, uh, uh, Andy. <coughs> um, you really laid it out on the line on all the various issues involved. And I think we need to save our MSBA card for the bigger project. Can you just explain we have this potential grant money? Uh, what about? Um, what <clears throat> Senator uh, Comerford offered, does that seem to be a reality or is that a pipe dream? Yeah, so just to highlight, Senator Comerford put in, I think it was 275000 uh, for one of the bond bills that came out to the Senate last week. Uh, it is promising from the Senate it was approved. Uh, however, I was at the Skills Capital Grant ceremony this past Friday talking to uh, a state official in the uh, governor's office and he was a little disappointed that it actually went through with the bond bill. So in essence, for those who are unfamiliar with bond bills, it's the legislators have the opportunity to put money, allocate some money aside, uh, but then it goes to the governor's desk, it's up to the governor to uh, allocate that money. So if we see the, the 275,000, great, let's add it. Uh, but I'm, I'm hopeful, but I don't want to tune in. I'm trying to get at the end of the day, and I just want to be honest. Uh, $275,000 is a lot. I, I really, truly want to thank Senator, Senator Comerford. I'll be on the record to thank Senator Comerford for advocating for us. But $275,000 in the eyes of a potential, I'm hoping, a $5 million project, or what we're going to look at today, we're looking at a $15 to $24 million project. $275,000 is not going to us to the finish line. So I need to say that. Thank you, Kevin. Um, the reality of the Thank you. Uh, Tim, where are we at with the insurance company? Um, they're all subject to down. So what was the final award? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that. Does anybody know that answer yet? I <laughs> All right. So those are our <clears throat> moving parts, Kevin. So ball's back in your court. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't know how much it's a project. Matter. I don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, but it's going to cost quite a bit. And uh, like, I want you to have the path forward for that. Okay, so here's the program. Maybe it's just easier to probably look at the one in front of us and uh, kind of talk about that. Um, I just want to make sure we have all the classrooms and shop spaces. And, uh, there was a pretty good description of the, um, you know, what I'm calling the uh, agricultural equipment repair shop. That was that was described pretty well. Um, there was uh, a, a requirement for two horticultural classrooms, and um, just talking with Tim, I know that you have um, also the animal, you know, using the old rack building uh, for classrooms down in that area. Um, and 
I'm just wondering if there is a possibility of either like maybe using that building as some kind of add-on or adding on to that building if it makes sense. I don't know if we'll, we can put it out there as an option or you know keeping it up the same level as the building is right now. Um, which <coughs> may, in my mind, it, it makes more sense to put a building up there. It's, you know, is it does it make sense to you know incorporate those classrooms into this new building just to make it a worthwhile building size? Um, this, it just seems like two classrooms and you know a couple of shop spaces. Is that is that worth the expense of the building? I don't understand the question. You want it, okay? If, so we need a few extra animal science classrooms, right? So to build yes. on to the old GCC building, I think would be a challenge just for the utilities to be down there and the sewer lines and stuff. That's correct. Um, so to put it here, somewhere, if it, if it yeah. was square footage and the yeah, box. So it would be square. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what your your intention is for prep building and the classrooms that are going in there, but you're right, there's no you know, looking at the old site plans, it didn't look like there was any substantial like, sewer uh, down there. I don't know how you can is it is there a septic system? Uh, it's sort of it's pumped up here. But the line is for like a small yeah, so not much water usage. I think instructionally the <clears throat> best case scenario we can only get two classrooms into that old building. Uh, but we're probably gonna need three or four in total. So if we were, the goal at some point would be to have another uh, horticulture instructor, so three classrooms make sense. But I think a minimum of five would probably be the goal. Do you agree? Two plus three, probably. So two in the rec building and a three in? Two in the rec building and five in the five. three yeah. plus three. <clears throat> Be best case scenario. I don't know if we need the six that was originally I think proposed. But that's from my perspective. Okay. And so the, the five classrooms are they dedicated to a specific um, program? So the three would be horticulture. And then two would be uh, companion. Yeah, they'd be probably just you know in the science book. Right. <coughs> we can figure that out later. The only difference would be, you know, what they put up there for instructional aids or other things, but the a standard <coughs> classroom would be the same. You know, smart board desks or benches or whatever it might be, but we can figure that out right now. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure I understood like the number of classrooms that you're looking at. It wasn't clear in the, in the written description that you could provide all together. Yeah. Well there it's different descriptions. You're getting one description from their perspective. And okay. Yeah. Right. All right. I just want to make you know, it, if it if it is all kind of lumped together, then you know. Yeah. Then that's more understandable. Right? So, the five so I got I got an email that had certain description in it, and then we this written piece that has the additional. I'm following you. Yeah. 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 Comprehend it. My one question would be the the larger horticulture classroom that we talked about last time. Uh, my question for internally to Joe is going to be knowing we're assuming what we've been looking at with the GCC building, there's that larger classroom in there. Would that larger classroom satisfy the need, satisfy the larger classroom need, or would be, is that not big enough we have to build a bigger classroom in the original construction? Yeah, I know that it won't be as big as the So it would, and it would have to be the new one you're going to make now. Existing large classrooms. It's just like a long, <coughs> long rectangle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can just park that. Yeah. Well, no, potentially that one would stay and we would just be knocking down the front two offices and an observation. Yeah, which is you know, kind of how you create the hall. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a little detail. I'd be curious to know if the new building cabinet would be five traditional size standard classrooms, we can handle the larger classroom need down in the GCC building, or of the five that are going into the new particle jubilee, one of the five, the larger classroom. Just a second, one of the five, the new building. 
Okay. So that's included in here. That was described in the written program as 1,200 square foot space. So just to keep your spreadsheet going, Ken, I would say, yes, that one, that means we need four others. Right, that makes sense. Right, so two horticulture and two animal. Yeah, yes. so your first line we changed from three to two at 1,000 for a total of 2,000. Yeah. I'm calling it the culture shop. Um, it was called dedicated project space. You see, that's the same thing. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, call it whatever you want. Let's make sure that way. This they described so yeah. that everybody kind of understands what it is. And then horticulture shop storage, and then uh, animal science shop. This is something that is kind of made from the street from this the painting from the program. Yeah, their shop is the barns and all the other stuff, so I don't know that we need a dedicated. So that's coming off. Yes. And the other changes, the first line, animal science classrooms, regardless of the description, two at a thousand per room. A thousand. space to put Giles Dex equipment here. That was, was kind of half including that. Yeah. Because we didn't think he was going to be in there like 24-7. Well, I would I would make a separate room so that he could just leave his tools in there and they would he has to be working on something that's gonna take <coughs> time sitting there. Then he just be there. So are you proposing the same thing but two are dedicated over to yeah. We were looking at three with the potential of him using two and me using one at the same time. But then also having this, you know, child needs to be able to know he would use that one space. But, and, yeah, if I can see that as a conflict, you know, just one thing to break, they break, you know. If you were able to get dedicated project space, because right now what you had was overlapping space. Two new garages and doesn't work well. Right, you have the two new garages so, deal with So if you have a dedicated project space with the climbing, mm -hmm. would you really need three? You're proposing three, basically three spaces. Ideally, three, yeah. Three different shops. You count the workspace, the project shop, and then you still have the outdoor garage space. Uh, that could be some of the collaborative space. Well, the repair, some of the repair space would be. <coughs> Storage for stuff that would go would need to go in that's a separate storage barn, and that's for example now when we practice hardscape in the winter we park the heavy equipment outside. Right, but originally built was built with housing inside. All right. right, can I jump in a second? This is what I'm hearing. These guys would like three spaces of theirs. Tim's indicating he needs a space for <coughs> the facility. Equipment repair? Is that how I can um, it? No, the, the guy at the barn takes care of all the heavy equipment. Okay. So we have a little conflict here. It doesn't seem like we can probably accommodate all this. Am I on the right path? Yeah. Okay. So then I mean, can we get away with two? Yes. Well, I think, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, when you look at all the programs on campus, they have a single space that's one they use where they have two spaces. Like plumbing has the indoors and then the outdoor seating fit and the right. secondary project space. I think three spaces with the cost of this. Um, well, yeah, I think that's best case wishful thinking. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's well that's what we asked easy. them to do. Right. I'm not, was, I'm not yes, yes. at all. <clears throat> but if looking at this now I don't I don't think it's reasonable. I also didn't 
know for sure or not whether he wanted a dedicated space for Giles in our shop. So that, either, so that's why I yeah. changed what he had written to include it as, you know, if like Giles needs it, Giles uses it. When he doesn't need it, we can use it for yep. repair and equipment. No, I said, totally good. And then, so that it was that's why it was three, but also like in the winter time or something, Jim's working on maintenance on the two piece on two pieces of equipment with his students. I can still do small engine stuff with my students. Right. In that third space. Right. With chainsaws and <clears throat> trimmers and small mowers. And, and that's why there was three bays versus two. So we're also trying to put the activities we do in place that's designed for them instead of putting the gasoline and look at a head house. Right. Yep. That's what I used to do. I'm not so that I Yeah. So, and if there's no way we can get that and have a space for dials, then can we work with two? Yes. Because you still have the out, outdoor equipment and tool storage, which, you know, I have a suggestion later on that. But you still have, you still have, you have dedicated project climbing space if we can get that to work, <clears throat> or that becomes an overlapping space with the larger garage. Um, the outdoor storage equipment space and all the classrooms, the head house. There's a lot of dedicated spaces right. that might have to become multi purpose spaces. Uh, I mean, if we have to give somewhere, I would give on that. What we don't want to give on, if we can help it, is the prod dedicated project space because it, as we talked about it, one of the issues that comes up with us being an outdoor program, especially like with exploratory in November and December, it's hard for us to do give them the same experience as the earlier weeks. Because if it snows or it's frozen out, we can't do the hardscaping with them, but we can do that inside with them. They can all get the same experience. They can get the right. climbing experience. They can, so that's what we're thinking is, yes. we Plus can you use it. have the dedicated space in the tennis court. We have a lot of space. Well, right, but, and, but I look at all my programs, I we have to focus on no, I understand. But, we're, but with that dedicated space, we can do more with the kids Consistently, yeah, and ex give exploratory kids that time in the fall where they're actually getting able to climb because it's raining outside. Where they climb inside, they can do the hardscaping inside. And it's because they're not freezing because it's you know 15 degrees yep. out. No, I totally get it. Um, I get where you were coming from and what we yeah. asked. Now I'm trying to help shape it to something that's more reasonable and equitable across the campus. Um, and what people have. For resources and spaces. Um, so where can we? Because the other thing too was had the way we have it set now, all our tools are in the back. Yeah. And when we're working on heavy equipment, it's in the front. So having that yeah. together is a lot better for the students for the learning and actually performing right. work. So we had two large bays that it is for equipment maintenance and storage. The one bay that's for um, farm techs, so we have so many overlapping equipment yep. that can become a dedicated space which we currently don't have. <clears throat> Just a, and if we were able to maintain the project dedicated space for climate, then you can make that work. Make work. So just so Giles is kind of responsible for all the heavy equipment and his, you know, his, his knowledge and experience. So it's not just it's not just the, the right. head equipment track. Right. It's everything. So, and we currently don't have a space for him to be able to service those things regularly, but he goes in and out of the or automotive. All right, from my knowledge, is Giles a school employee or is he part of the instructor? No, I'm definitely. Okay. Yeah. Just for point of information, first of all, I know we have. I have mechanics that <coughs> repair equipment and they have their shop. They, they have these guys that need to repair equipment for their stuff. And you have Giles to repair equipment. So what have we done in the past with Giles to make this happen? Um, kind of kind of fill in the gaps on what's our program. You know, we go take you know, take care of our valve, take care of it. Yeah, so where did you, you do that? Wherever you can find space. Okay. He was so going to the Hackmack shop, where a lot of our shop. Or, gotcha. And yeah. the problem with that is it becomes, uh, well, do they have the space? And then it becomes a little piss and mash. And it took most 
So trying to avoid yeah. that. I mean, I'm just saying if we're, if we're yep. using the Elko's distress stuff, is there any room in that to try and accommodate some of that? I don't know. I'm just throwing it up. No, because they would, <clears throat> if we did that to ACMAC, you'd have one shop with, when you add in all the spaces, has 50,000 square feet spaces in horticulture, and you'd have ACMAC, which has, you know, maybe 2,000 square feet with a and then they're done because you'd have to pull part of that bay away. They're, they they wouldn't be able to do it. You got a feast of the family per per on campus. Plus the um, the night school welding program. <coughs> oh, that's true. They're yeah. going to develop some space. Yep. So they're already stretched pretty thin over there. So the one I have space a question. Three thousand square feet. Before we move on. Um, how this all, all works. So if something breaks that the, the programs are using, you guys try to fix it yourself, and if you can't, it goes over to Giles Arena. Well, so thing, this, this position's brand new. So Giles is really gathering up information on getting an inventory of all the equipment, trying to get all the um, filters and oil. So, I mean, not that we've really talked about, we're kind of envisioning that if he's in there working on the those and stripping it down, and the kids want to be there working with them. I would think that would work. Um, but if they but they can't, he'll just you know, do the dozer back up in front of them go through the tractors in there. So So how long has this person been on staff? Uh, about eight and nine years. Oh, okay. We just created this particular position two years ago. Be more routine maintenance and have, yeah. more efficient, more <clears throat> have one point of contact. Track. She really going out. Yeah, no, shows. absolutely. I, I'm just trying to get a whole picture of what's going on. Uh, what about the property that we have on the forestry? That big building. What's being done in that project? Well, I, we're done. Uh, maintenance is out of there. It's all maintenance is out of there. You can occupy it. There's no utilities, right? You're saying we could big buildings in front of there. Yeah, we could rotate equipment through there. Right. So we, didn't we have dozers and chainsaws and stuff up there at one time? Um, uh, right now, it's just a storage place. Right? It's a very expensive storage place. Well, we can, we can store it when we're working up there. We can have our chainsaws in there. We can have what's good. We can have a dozer and stuff. But we can't really work on stuff if we don't have power. We don't have heat. We don't have. You know, it's not it's not conducive in January to work on fixing a piece of the wood. All right. I'll, I'll but we can use the space for when we're up there to safely store all of our and throwing throwing over. Can I have a little bit of maintenance, right. please? Is what's a lot cheaper? Put some heat in there, some electricity, or can we? Yeah, it, remember that just became cost prohibitive. So we had to run that just because of the cost of the Yeah, remember that just became cost prohibitive to run that line up that dirt road because we can't cut through the woods because of um, the okay. Well, no, no, no I talked to a real animal. It's like a, 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 a I know we tried to tell the that time we were So we have to, you know, so we have to put a couple of transformers to that run. Okay. Um, I'm just putting like, yeah. stuff out there. I hate seeing empty building and we're looking for oh, space. I mean, would, could we put enough solar on it? Not like this here. You could put solar on nice LED lights. <laughs> but, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of thought we kind of fell back to like, when you're up there and you're working, you get the dozer back on and get the train on. And right there, you back inside for the day. Well, right, and that's how we're kind of right. Because that building originally started out, we were supposed to have a classroom and bathrooms, right? But you couldn't get water. The city wouldn't tap into a water line for us because that main line down by Scott, you say said it's a transmission line. You want to cut into it. All the houses there are all fed from Uli's garage from on a copper tube, and they put cut into it. And the hospital would have that. What about like the new building that we allowed to see? Yeah. Our yep. And you would think everything's changed now since they at least get water up there. Well, that's what I'm it would still be the hell of a run, you know. No, I understand. I'm just saying. And I'm, I'm working on options. Yep. I think, from my perspective, instructionally, <clears throat> that area, if we are, if this is cost prohibitive to have this much space, and if the project and Climbing space is overlapping space. That area could be freed up by cycling 
we do it with the animals now. We cycle the animals out to different properties for right. different things to free up space. The equipment could be moved in the wintertime to free up space, certain equipment, and then you would have dedicated space. And it wouldn't be outside. It would be protected from the elements and then. So that, that might be able to, beyond just when they're up there using it as a home base, right. It, right. we could use it as a way to cycle equipment around to free up space for we do, we do store some stuff up there when we're not using it. Just yeah. to get free up space already. Okay. Uh, now we have more up there. Which is we have. How, how big is that forestry building up at the beginning? It's well, probably equivalent of four bay garage. 30 by 70? Yeah, something yeah. So 2,100 square feet, thereabouts. Good size. That's nice. Timber for right. the carpentry building. Yep. Right, right. Um, then is that that Smith Folk property, correct? Right. It's been that way for a long time. It was never the VA or whatever. There was VA, but my father was in America. Okay, so um, this conversation about this building somewhat delves tails into what we're doing here today, do we work? space limitation um so you have a water water issue now the city did what did they do there a, a pump or put in they put in uh, takes pressure situation because there weren't enough you know, pressure coming down off the mountain street, so they had enough you know, pressure for it. okay oh. so then there's possible conversation with the city of getting this water but you're saying tim it would be quite just a lot yeah it's a long run Way, yeah, okay, sure. now the power requirement, would anybody have any discussion of a, a generator with propane tank up there? Um, I never, never thought of it. There's a conduit that goes from the coal to the um, cell tower. It's dedicated for us. They put it in if we ever, if we ever want to go up that far. So we have a line that we could pull power from from about, the street? About two thirds of the way up. Yeah. Well, that's for future discussion. Okay. Sorry, Kevin. So, I think it's all part of the process. Oh, absolutely. It's good to uh, go through this. Being the senior statesman and the oldest trustee, I have a recollection of what we have. <laughs> so I want to bring it to the light to people as a reminder and the other uh, main trustees don't know any comments. Okay, so circling back to the program here, um, we ended up with two bays instead of three. Is that where? I think I think you're going to keep it. It's just going to be how we divvy right. it up when it goes. One will be a one be a separate bay from the other two, separated by a wall. Or, but the other two would they'd have their independent door, but then just one yeah, big space for two two. Yeah. Okay. Storage, I think those were directly off the uh, group program. The locker rooms. Um, I understand kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for not a separate room, it's kind of getting part of the shop and part of the hallway. Yeah. So we'll figure that out once we start getting into the floor plans. Yeah, but I think it's only like three lockers. Must be in Spain, right? Somewhere around the 60. Okay. Well, like you said, if you're thinking about 40 years down the road, maybe it's just a right. small building. Bring in another instructor and dedicate to get increase the professional to grow. So I wasn't sure how the model would be. I mean, if we have one more teacher, are we still only going to have 12 in ninth and 10th grade and then divide them out? Or if we're going to overload ninth and 10th grade, yeah. then we would need more than the 40. Yep. Perfect. Is that number, would that be if you did an animal in there? Does that take care of that? No, I think. I think we're going to have to think about that. I think if the lockers move, how much space do we have? I think we have enough space in the back of that, of the old building. If the rent of the building would be the new uh, in the science building. To, to put everything. So I think we can get science. more lockers than what we currently own. Yeah. That's great. So we'd have to measure, I'm sure, to handle the science. Thing, so. 
yeah, to, to handle their increase. So we should just think about lockers for horticulture as opposed to animal science and the lockers. I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. So, but this, this number looks okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I bumped it up a little bit just to make it modular. I just wanted to hear the thought process. Okay, uh, outdoor equipment, tool storage. Um, so are we still on with this one, or is this? I, my only feedback on this would be uh, if it's cost prohibitive, that this becomes a separate project that we use shops for on campus. And that would be able to do it as a separate project. So this being outdoor equipment? Because it's already separated from the building, correct? By outdoor? Is that what that means, outdoor equipment and storage? You're talking about a separate... It's, it's similar to what outdoor what you're access. Was that the 30? I think that was more... If that's coming off of our right, that would be like... So as an annex off the building? Yeah. We were able to do that with carpentry and reduce cost. If, yeah, if we can. I mean, I don't know. I mean, absolutely. Or it or doesn't become into a problem we had because we couldn't tie in the, you know, there were no fire alarms going off because that's just the right. way it was So does it make more sense to have it? it? It was just that's for all that small equipment that yeah. needs to be stored somewhere. I don't have a problem at all with it in, in the plan. I just question if there's a so that would be something you could still put it on the plan. Yeah. That, and not leave that out of the construction business, right? And then say, hey, the kids, if you get tag, you can tag on for a fire alarm, then it won't just go through the wall. Yeah, I mean, if the district's realistically looking at three to five million dollars to spend on a building, and this is tracking at 15 to 24, it means the other thing four to five times. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all the work. Okay. <laughs> that's what that, that doesn't necessarily have to be attached to the building. Like, right. I know you're talking about over by the horse crowd for the equipment. If you have one yeah. that was enclosed and secured to house all that stuff, like the, the shovels, the rings, the yeah, it might be all that. We it doesn't have, have to be heated. It just, you know, lights yeah, would be right. nice, but we should be able to get access to all of our tools. Sure. And equipment. Electricity and yeah. and sort, yeah. Yeah. That that's all that has to be. So okay. that can be put wherever. You can put it down the road if you have to I've had it. Okay. So that's, that's all that is. And there, I, it's just my questions around that. All right, so potentially that would be an in-house project. It's still on the design. It's still in here. Yeah, but, but construction-wise, it would be easier. But, uh, We yeah, the only, the only thing I'm thinking about this is that we're going to have, like, you know, we're going to look at some site conditions and after, but, you know, we are thinking about a certain square footage for the shops and the classrooms, and we're going to most likely be on the upper floor. We have a, a basement floor, which could be the, um, you know, the equipment repair shops. Um, but the way it's, the way the hillside is, there's, like, only a certain amount of access. Um, unless we start to pick it up massive amounts of soil um, access to the, the side of the building at the basement level. So just need to kind of consider that, you know, it's probably got enough for the equipment, you know, repair shop overhead doors they can look at, putting the, the uh, equipment storage down you know, here probably isn't going to work. Uh, yeah, but there's, uh, push it back too far there's other spots they're talking about. So if, right. we, if we did have it as a separate outbuilding that we built so we have more flexibility on where it goes versus the space so it might help with that yeah. and you'll probably see a correlation between the 3,000 square feet of three bays for equipment and the similarity of the classrooms the kind of bigger classrooms we'll go yeah. that. <clears throat> um, so the greenhouse uh, I have it kind of separated into two. I don't know if there is a separate like use for each one of them. Yes, there is. Yes. Okay. So is this correct? One is hydroponic, the other one is. Okay. 
Frederick. That was Frederick, he knew. He was a great program there. Then the head house. Um, so, I guess, how do you see this being used? I know that there's you know, just in my discussions with him, you know, there's some issues with security on the campus, and there's, you know, but there's also a need for, like, the retail type of, like, Yeah, we, business. we had hoped you might, you be the creative person who could come up with a solution, whether it be an exterior door that customers can enter a kind of defined space to interact with students when that happens. Um, but it's not something that, like, it would probably be attached to the head house. Yeah, so that's how we envisioned it. Yeah, I would, I, that's not a problem. It's more like inviting people onto the campus. Uh, yeah. Well, we, yeah, well, we'll take you that. There's a process for that. Specific times of day or that. But I think their point about having it to be able to have an external access. Uh, so we want to limit customers' interaction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like they come to our restaurant. Yeah, it's kind of a fine space, so that's, that's, hope that answers your question. It does. Yeah. So are you looking for, like, parking to <laughs> associate with this little space? I mean, you wouldn't need it otherwise because you have your... Yeah, I think if you looked at the on. existing spot, if there was a way to... But I don't know what some of the trees in the way. The parking currently is what's down there already, so either we have to knock down that well, red storage bar will come down. Either that becomes parking. You look at back to your photo. That's what I was um, that. You would have a parking on the upper side. You would either have it on the upper side or you'd have to have it on the lower side. If we kind of envisioned it if we tore down the part we're still using down the road, that would be a parking spot be right in the front door. Where we go. It would work if that worked with your design. And that would also allow us to make some showcase landscape stuff from the front door. Well, then that wouldn't be incorporated most likely with the head house of the greenhouse. Well, right, because of the, unless you, I don't know how you can, unless you design it. Because you're using that, so you're thinking that space for bays and garages. Yeah, just some early. It, 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 it doesn't have to be connected, I'm not saying. Go to this one. No. This is just kind of a footprint. It doesn't mean anything. It's more just to try and define an area for yeah. the building that we're kind of looking at. Yeah. So you know, just think about what what we're talking about here. Um, you know, the, the the greenhouse would kind of be at this upper side here. The head house would be at this end. We may get some parking up here. That was one of the spots I was thinking. Yeah. And then down here would be the um, the equipment repair garage at the lower yeah. level. Yeah. Um, and I think James, see where you have that. Uh, it looks like an entrance yeah. at the corner. I think that's the spot he was thinking. And then it wouldn't have to be connected to the head houses. I think if you wanted to connect to the head houses, then you'd have it at the uh, upper first area that you pointed at. Yeah. 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 And if it's not connected yeah. to the, the landscape, yeah, showcase that you want. So you can do it on that side, or you guys he's talking about the. Retail space. Well, yeah. it's a little <laughs> what you did there is a little different, like your initial one, <laughs> and also we thought about if we had to build a building behind what's currently still there, we would use that. We thought that space when the rest of them is demolished, that space would be available. That's that's one of the things you can improve. Not, but yeah, I mean it shows everything kind of well. And then you got. I, I think we're still in the uh, mid twenty thousand square foot range. Or the building, so this does have a little bit more. So the upper part would be two stories, and the lower part would just be the base. Right. Yeah, I think that could be a really nice spot. It come in, since where the existing red barn storage is, that comes down. Oh, be the bar. top of the photo. Yeah. yeah. If if the greenhouses came off the back of that top photo, and yeah. if the head house and the retail space was there, you could they could create parking, and you could do. James was talking about having kind of landscape showcases and other things in that corner but versus the front. <clears throat> yeah, the, at the front it would be it would become more of a security issue with the intermingling between students and visitors. Okay. okay. All right, question. Somebody explain to me definition of a head house. So the room attached to a greenhouse where you prepare plants. 
then they can go into the green. So a prep room. Prep room. Yeah, right. And set the head of the green. Okay. No, no thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you were saying greenhouse. <laughs> well, all right. Oh, prep area for greenhouse. Is that a good definition? Yep. Prep area for greenhouse. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Then we have the head house storage, walk-in cooler for um, for the head house, and then the retail space is part of that. Part of that. Piece. Yeah. Okay, now um, get down to the instructor's office areas. We had um, eight to begin with, based on the original program. <coughs> so we're talking about just five now. Five is only three. Yeah, the somewhere else. they're going to have office space in that other building. Okay, so I don't think they would need it. So are these three directly associated with the shop spaces yes. and could be yes. actually part of those you know, built within them or do you want them separated? Well, be good. I mean, I've seen them incorporated. It would right? be good if they were together. Like That's like when we commune with each other. Right. But on newer buildings, they have like you know, glass windows that overlook the shop space if student management. If, right. they, could be, um, if they could be on the second floor, where the classrooms are with staircase into that two bay garage or the dedicated project space if there's a way those yeah. two areas link where they would be able to have glass to come down over that would probably be good if i'm explaining that right best case scenario yeah <coughs> there's just an accessibility issue with that you know, i know maybe realistically you wouldn't have an instructor with a disability Mm -hmm. But I guess you can't design a building with discounting that. Well, no, you would have both because you would have access from the classroom level. You'd also have access from the shop level to the staircase. So if you, Pathfinder has a great setup where many of their shops actually have that. So, but they have an elevator. But that's not. That's but the, okay. Last visit, you said it wouldn't be an issue with things because you had access from the ground floor. Correct. So, so if, but I'm just thinking of. You know, the, if an instructor had a disability, he wouldn't want to have them go outside around to get them out of the lower level. All right, so what's maybe I'm misunderstanding your design then. On that drawing, yeah. you're having the bays cut into the hillside, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So when we talked about the classrooms, you had said there wouldn't have to be a elevator at our last meeting because there would be ground floor access from higher up. Is that still right? And accurate? You would have stairs inside, where you somebody to use a stair to get down. But you know, if you have a person with a disability, if that person will have to go outside, outside. the building and down. Yes. Okay. Well, you said it was okay for the students, but it's not okay for our staff. No, it's not okay for. I mean, it, it, you can do that. It's just a really inconvenience and domain house problem. Okay. I didn't get that from what you said last time. Last time you had said if there was ground floor access, it wouldn't. It, so I guess they're not the code used. required to have an elevator. Yep. But for convenience sake, okay, it's better to have one. So how do we solve that for the students in the classrooms? And how do we how See, do we solve that? Like you're more we're more likely. I mean, it, we're, you're going to you potentially could have a person with disabilities in, in either category, student or staff. So how do we solve that problem? Right. I was thinking that the agricultural repairs garage would be a separate program and so people wouldn't be necessarily like using both floors. So oh, have okay. a separate kind of area for the okay. students and staff gotcha. for that one program. Well so they yeah, that's their that's program just is all floors. part of our program. So like a landscaper is going to maintain their equipment. Yeah. That's what that's what that space is for. And our equipment is push mowers, weed trimmers, chainsaws to heavy equipment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to offer opportunities, you know, and so meeting the code is okay. Know. So then we would have to put an elevator in this building if you because they're gonna they're gonna have gonna, access. Yes. Yeah, because our students and I get yeah, I misunderstood you in the last meeting, but our students and staff are gonna access all floors. Yeah. Within right. the same program. 
I'm, I'm, I try to be really cost efficient with my suggestions, you know, and you know, elevators are expensive. So if we can avoid it, that would be great. You know, it sounds like the program is very integrated into you know, the two pieces. Yeah. So it would make more sense to put money in that. Okay. Or you. whatever you want to pump for. The last time we looked at something, I think they quoted us on more money dollars for just you're building that dedicated shaft. Yeah, is it? I mean, so so you know, maybe maybe we do look at just a one-story building, keeping everything on one floor, and you know, we have some old basement area for that equipment storage. You know, that's all. That's all that goes in the basement level because it sounds like it has to be built separate. That make that access for things. So. If we went to only one floor level and maintain the classrooms, so right? Obviously, the footprint gets larger, but the, how much flexibility do we have with the existing, you know, rows that we have? We can move those around, can't we? Yeah. To an extent. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's nice about right now is that any emergency vehicle can easily right. go around every single floor. <clears throat> Yeah, you could. What you were suggesting was all one floor as a classroom could be over a basement storage space where the elevation changes. And that's just access from the outside, which is what it is now. Right. You know, it's just dead storage for seasonal stuff. That would allow to go to the other one Which might be better for well, so you have the classrooms, the shop spaces, yeah. the greenhouse, and then underneath would be yeah. storage that you have to go out and access. From outside, which we do anyways. Right. You just have to look down. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. You can build a lot of well, storage space. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm sorry if I if I you know let you astray there. Oh no worries. I think it was good to work it out. And you can't put, like I know a Pathfinder they have from their main entrance up to the academics, they have a full down wheelchair ramp um, elevator. You couldn't put that in. They're very specific about how you do this for but it's for a wheelchair. Yeah, in, in this condition, I don't think that it would be allowed. That it may have been a very specific, you know, well, half, like bring, a full story. It Usually, if it's a full story, they won't do that. If it's a half story, it's a half story. I think it might be a half story. You just walk in, you can even walk down, take a raised range. Yeah. yeah. There's probably an after action. Actually, they have to two me. because you go down to the gym. Too. You go down by the gym, there's an academic wing, they have one there, and then to go up to the Second floor of the academic wing. Yeah. On that side, yeah. Okay. It's a bigger staircase, but I don't think it's full floor. Okay. Okay. And then the you know, rest of this is just kind of like toilet, staff toilet. The staff toilet is a code required that's pretty separate from it the student toilet. That's good enough. Oh, no, all right. Well, we, 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 that was one of them. I hope we had one just today. <laughs> Sitting, including up the greenhouses and the 
what area that's That's the tall roll footprint? This is the tall roll footprint, so this is the greenhouse here. This is the part that's like, that was burned. Just, yeah. as, once again, it's like different floor things for, for most of them. Um, like this height would be probably the most ideal. It's like out here, it's about uh, 230. And I, I, this was more of a conversation about, you know, getting this floor to work with a basement level down below here. So, you know, if we're having everything on one floor, you know, I think cost-wise, it's probably going to be the, the most cost-efficient to do on one floor building. And we can do a small basement under a portion of it. The way the reason I was started looking at this is like what utilities do you have on site here? What can we tap into? So we do have a eight inch water line that comes down, you know, behind going uh, B and you know we can tap off that for sprinklers and, and, and uh, or I think somebody told me that you have pretty good water pressure here. Um, so it should be enough for a sprinkler and domestic water service. Um, we do have a four inch sanitary line that comes out here we need something bigger than that, but it turns into a needed line once it gets to the manhole down on the side of building B. So we can, we'll have to like, do a trench out and uh, kind of put that on for a So we'll have to put in, you know, I don't know what you have for power in this building, um, but you know, you need to upgrade that. that I assume there's water service there currently. Yeah. So why? This is existing water service into the building, so the but you would need to increase it so for the sprinklers. Okay. It has to be a dedicated one. It would be a combination of domestic and sprinklers. Two separate services. Could, could potentially tap off the main line two separate lines, right? Yeah. This building building B doesn't have sprinklers. And right there we have one for the connections. And typically when you get a campus like this, you know, so you consider one fifth building having fire at a time and have multiple buildings, so it should be sufficient to, to tap on that one line. And I noticed down here you had a, like, this transformer or some kind of a box that uh, power comes out of the distribution panel of the park line. So I don't know what, we'll have to look further at the, uh, the you know, the capacity of what's here um, and, uh, you know, figuring out what we need for this building. I did talk to a site um, civil engineer and a mechanical electrical engineer about this to kind of get some input. So for, um, I don't know what we have in the garage space right now. Do you have, like, exhaust, uh, exhaust uh, um, you know, system that ties onto exhaust pipes or whatever? You know, Real garage door. So, is it, what do you want to see there? Is it is it something that you want to have, like a? Yeah, like you can have it just in the air. So, you like in uh, take an air out of the space, in or you can have it this whole on. this whole shop exhaust that drop down. They can pull it out, but then depending on what the shop is, they have specific exhaust systems built around the door. That whole place was built by spare parts. So. There's nothing to go around with this to close that down. We definitely want that if they're going to run stuff inside. Right. Have gasoline. You know, you want to make that out of this one. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to look at that further. And then for the uh, for the garage bays, we'll need like the drains with the oil bar separators and all that stuff. So we'll just kind of need to consider all that. You need to find stuff. What's that? You need 200 so you can have those. Um, yeah, so I, I guess, you know, any any questions or comments on this, you know, the electrical and the IT part will be the, the challenge. Right. And we'll bring, uh, so I'm assuming we put natural gas for fuel. For fuel? Yeah. Um, go ahead. True. Sure. Yeah. We'll think about that part. Uh, do you have that um, on campus already? Yeah, I mean, if there's, it goes to the, I can't imagine the line that goes to the GCC building is big enough, so it has to come off the, the corner of the B building and go down. I would say B, the corner. So that big, that square you got there, on the opposite corner, 
so down so and all the other way go up for it. Yeah, yeah that's the mark here. Yeah, it comes there. Yeah. Or we come off the back of this building. So what do we, how are we fueled currently? Oil? Yeah. Uh, 500 gallon above there. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I guess we can look at it both ways. Uh, but, yeah, it would be better if we did natural gas. Some, did some like looking for at different agricultural um, you know, vocational schools and found some images. I just kind of want to get your reactions to these. As uh, you know, I, I don't want to make it drool or anything. But there's still Essex or Norfolk. Yeah, one of the three. I don't I don't remember which ones they were, but you know, it's it's they're nice. They have like natural light. They have like these screw systems. That's Kind of have utilities that drop down like you can see these outlets that kind of drop down from the ceiling that would be you know great to have kind of make the spaces really efficient and flexible to use for multiple purposes so those small like housing slides on the track to pretty much go anywhere yeah i mean i think this is just like you missed you missed drops right so I don't think they're anything pretty yeah. expensive or you know it's a complicated yeah. system. That's something they have been adding the birds from flyer. So it's going to be here. Some of the things we'll talk about next. No, no, it's great it's on here. But this is that this is what they use for their for their climbing structure. There. I don't know if you've seen it before. I have pictures on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> but you were looking for something that was actually taller, it seemed like, because this, yeah. this definitely yeah. not 35 right. feet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good for basic instruction, but if we're trying to give kids an experience of climbing and it's snowing or raining out, we could go higher in one, on one or two ropes. That would be good. Oh. Yeah. The other, you know, that's why we said like a tower in the middle or where the peak is, where they could go up maybe 30 feet. But lower down, further out, they can be doing stuff like that, where it's just practice and tying and testing their knots. Right. Oh. So, are you looking for some kind of structure like that? It's it's not, it's no, any or structure. It's more like a, along a wall. So, it'd be like a such a rock gym where they have yeah. stations yeah. along the wall. We would have stations along the wall where they would put the rope over, they would tie their knots, they would practice climbing, but then have the taller section actually going up like a tree. Yeah, it looks like they have to probably drop that. It's awesome. It's here. So I want to. Probably the air in the water. That's it? The air in the water. It's from pressure air. Uh, for servicing. Yes, with that air, air, air machine. Yeah, air. Yeah. That only yeah. Yeah. When he was in the can, yeah. okay. um, this canning was also an exhaust. Right. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. So they had a platform outside there, um, equipment things, just for doing things outdoors as well as in. So we had to talk about that on some kind of data or something to you know, put out there. You know, this kind of brings up another question about, you know, how do you how do you work to sustainable like agricultural, you know? thought into your program and is that something that is kind of built into the design that that is done I mean, i'm just kind of thinking about that because it seems like it might be hard <laughs> no but you know i'm not trying to like push like lead lead or anything like that i'm just saying that you know i assume that you know agricultural you know instruction or academics kind of incorporates you know it's just common sense you know uh, sustainability you know, in how things get taught and that's kind of one to you know ask about that you know what your thoughts are i mean we try and do a little you know some sustainability with them but we're not doing as much as 
there as well. Right. Yeah, and it's not just green roofs, it's like water management right. and you know, right. storage. I haven't thought a lot about it. Okay. That's fair. I think it would be incorporated right. with the greenhouse. We could absolutely teach it. Absolutely. I mean, there's not a lot of crop production in the Massachusetts framework, so around sustainable agriculture for crop production. Yeah. But as far as you know, sustainability within the, the, the horticulture programs and greenhouses, if it could be incorporated, I think it would be positive. I mean, I know that's a small outdoor roof garden. Uh, there's glass windows that you look out to see there. I mean, it would be a small scale sustainability for green roofs. That, that they're probably using it too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, down below, they've got the water runoff from the roof, um, a dry riverbed for for that. I mean, yeah, that could all be incorporated as something we can, we can teach them because we just haven't done that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, well, that's I talk right. about it in landscape design. I talk about what if we had examples of it. Right. We haven't done it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be part of the framework. Well, it's, it, that's not really in our framework, but. Um, it's just teaching them landscape design. What we teach them is, oh, I think we should incorporate sustainability. Back to Jim's point, right? We're built, designing a building that we can use for the right. future. That's going to get put in the landscape at some point. Right. When you guys revise it, yeah. it's going to get in. Right. So if you yeah. design something with top water or maybe the infrastructure or well, right. that you could teach and show right. as examples. And so I, I know what there is, they have some interesting collecting the, the, the roof water and have it the way it comes down and how so we have that we could then design and build with the kids that over the rainwater garden or have the structure with the drainage for a roof garden in a small space that would be ideal as well but I don't want to story on how yeah it doesn't doesn't matter it needs to be on a roof right, right no that's how we can do outside also I mean, that's something that carpentry would go Sure, and a lot of cities of are putting in those sustainable vegans now. Or right. The, um, but I'm just thinking, like, if we were to do a mock up for a roof garden, sustainable for sustainability that way with the green roofs, they could, between carpentry and plumbing, and like, we could build something that the kids could then you know, install, but it would be on the ground level. Down outside. Line, yeah. yeah. Right. As long as you had the infrastructure to support that yeah. area. Joe, with your, because we're doing this whole structure, what you're talking about here, the leadership side of that. When other schools come to look at our school, the boys are leader. They're going to be damn, which we have to. Now is the time they can act on their own Thank you, I agree. I think it's going to be in the frameworks the next time it comes around. It's just sure. that sort of sustainable. And I think when you look at what's happening in the Southwest, where they're paying people to turn grass into you know, your lawn area into uh, more yeah, zero, zero escaping sure. and, and <clears throat> sustainable plants and things like that that are more natural to the habitat. I think it's going to be important. Well, it's, well, it's, it's got to be thought about as right. we move forward, forward when yeah. we go to construction. Yeah. We, can we put yeah. solar panels on? Well, can if, we, if there's opportunities to the kind of build in a vocational you know, ability yeah. into the building, you know, by putting things like this in, and that's only going to benefit. I mean, if, if we're having a it has dual purpose, not that much more of a fee, but if we're having a more of a flat roof versus a peak roof, do we put an area on there that is not too expensive to put in a green There's a good example of a green roof locally at the Stigel Heltron building on Route 5 by RK Miles. That big warehouse building we built some years ago, and that's got a green looking roof. So from an instructional management side, right, my first concern is back to your access question. Right. Being able to access that, right? Oh, and the well, other yeah. thing is being is uh, a maintenance plan and the cost yes. to maintain and well and I think the infrastructure for supporting it changes right. too. Right. Right. So that increases the cost. Sure. So for if the student experience can be the same because the infrastructure was built into actually replicating it at ground level. Because the water can come down and we can we can yeah. uh, mimic and you can learn how to do it there. So <clears throat> that's more the educational part of the instructional that makes more sense than having the whole thing be something that we have to maintain and yeah. you know for point versus <coughs> kind of do that.
because you know, I'm sure it's from college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it almost looks like a private school in some ways. The Bahamas brain is still a yeah. Still. <laughs> no stay home. That's what I saw from the outside view and it just looked you know, like not a public school. It's just yeah, being up there. Some high ceiling areas that we can kind of incorporate, you know, kind of allows more flexibility for use rather than having like just a low, you know, low drop ceiling similar to, to something like this. If Plus, we, if we can save money on ceilings and whatever. If, if you know, the, the dedicated private space that they're talking about, where you know, one side of it doesn't need to be 35 feet, the other side can be right. a you know, more standard, like 10 feet or more, would be yeah. acceptable pitch roof like that or that being built into whatever the existing design that might be a great space because you can have the climbing on one end and you can have the, you know, the project space on the other side. Okay. Spaces to me, do you have like lifts that will need to get built in? Or we do not. I mean, small. I think it's, you know, we don't have one, but I think the small, smaller ones for the more right, more right? The zero turn and stuff right. like yeah. that would be nice to have. But now they also make portable ones but would, too. But would that one Kyle has for the zero turn? The big one? The one. Yeah. I mean, it works. It's functional. You just, I get, I get it. Because I know Dave Travers said there was one on the bar. Portable type, yeah. For that, is that what you're talking about? Oh, okay. yeah. The ones you might just answer your question would you know, take a lot more on the floor to put them chest high, not like an automobile that's going to be able to 20 feet high. Yeah. Um, so the overhead clearance is not necessary. Jaws. That's also the whole portable. Yeah. Portable type. Yeah, it would be anything would be relatively yeah. hard. Yeah. Being versatile is kind of no, I still recommend. Um, this one I, I showed this because it has like traditional like building materials that you might see in like agricultural setting. So I thought it was interesting the way they kind of incorporated some of the colors and materials together. I think aesthetically, we probably wanted to tie them down there. We're looking to sheathe the barns and some steel, uh, right? Or the steel. So like corrugated steel over the old barns to update them and you know to become more sustainable. So if that fit into the landscape of that area, it'd be smart. Yeah. If that was their thing here. So natural materials and some more you know, daylight and photos. And display areas inside. But uh, they were pretty, you know, open as far as like showing the utility lines in the building. You know, so some people might think that is uh, unsight unsightly, but that's what, that's what a sea building is. It's all <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you prefer it that way. Yeah. Easy access. Uh, yeah. Easy. yeah. Well, they save money here, and then they spend it all on the wood ceiling here. So just want to kind of get get thoughts on all of this. Teasing us. You know, you I think you know you're gonna have a new building when you're when you're done, you know. <laughs> it all works out, yeah. It's gonna be, you know, a nice looking building. So um, I think you know that's um, much all I have, you know, like, like I said before, we will update the program and we'll get started with some floor plan ideas. And, uh, you know, we don't usually like jump right into like a plan, we probably put together like a adjacency diagram so that, you know, we have like bubbles of spaces and kind of want to feel like, you know, what, what goes next to other things. Maybe we can get that done quickly, send it out for everybody's, uh, you know, kind of comments. And uh, our, our 
if you feel comfortable with that. Uh, I know floor plans are a little bit easier to digest, and, uh, but if a uh, bubble duster in kind of would just find some back end things, you can kind of see what we're, how we're kind of interpreting what you're talking about. I think that's a logical next step. Yes. Uh, all right, but I have a question. Uh, I'm a little confused about the square footage. No, not a little. I am a lot of confused about the square footage. Okay, we have Andy's uh, original report, June 7th, about the possible type of what we can do here option one, two, and three. Uh, rebuild damage back garage office in one classroom, basically 3,000 square feet of rebuild. Okay, rebuild entire E building, maintain total square footage, 6,500 square feet. And then option three, let's roll in the dice and all move, you know, increase total square footage. So, we talk. The existing building E complex is approximately 8,000 square feet, correct? So, I have the same question. Oh, okay. So, so, hold on. So, is that right, Kevin? Yeah. Building needs approximately eight. This spreadsheet that you, so that you took from their thoughts and wish list items, total program area 3,100. 31,000 square feet. Then there is some number, 15,000 square feet thrown around somewhere. I'm confused. The, the 15,000 was just identifying, you know, that was from the footprint of the building you know, kind of on the site. You know, it was just a, identifying the space on the site. It's okay. Like, kind of give you an idea of how much. What we have to work with, potentially? Uh, yeah, I mean, we probably have more. We have other options to it. Okay. That, that one space. So, I mean, this is adding up all the different spaces that we're, that we're looking at. You know, we can make them more efficient. And then adding on 30%, uh, you know, circulation, mechanical space, bathrooms, and all that at the end. Um, so, you know, it's, it's based on, you know, what you're, what you're telling us that you need. Understood. But what we need, I don't see how we can afford. It's interesting. So is that where you're going? Can you give your thought process to Andy? That's where I've been for the last couple. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. So, so Tim, you provided my square footage came from the document you prepared originally. Yep. I just added it up, and that's where that 64 change in the footage. So whether 6,400 or 8,000 square feet, that's the ballpark that we currently have. Um, after the discussions this morning, we went from that 31,000 and some square foot of us, spirit of change from square footage down to now we're just shy of 28,000. We're going to do something last week we talked about. Right now we're at 28,000 square foot range, which again is still much larger than, than we currently have. Uh, and then I was running the numbers at the same time based on the construction costs that, that just shared with us throughout the process, uh, including the greenhouses. We rebuilt the greenhouses. We're still looking at a, a, almost a 14 to 22 million dollar project based on the same square footage. So yeah, I'm still using the same. If we if we say we're not going to touch the greenhouses, if we can remove those, if we can work around the greenhouses, uh, we're down to just shy of 25,000 square feet, which is still a 12 to 19 million dollar project. Which is still quite a bit of money. I think we could get away with only for doing one greenhouse and then the roof house. It. You have to take, you, know, you have to do the 2,500 dedicated project space, and it has to become double space for the garages. But that would make it more important to build the outside storage and the equipment storage in the garage, almost to redo what is burned. So we have to, that would still have to be an in-house project. It, I think would put more pressure on us to have to do it sooner because they're going to need that space. 
but you, you, you could also break that out of the cost. We're going to struggle to come up with five million dollars without, and that's including, that's assuming we get these two grants. That's not going to the city. That's not going to the SBA. That's not. That's just internally. What can we do with insurance money and grant money? We will struggle to find money. Do I go to the board and ask for tuition revolving above and beyond? How much tuition revolving do we have? It's, it's by shy two million dollars. That's another discussion. I just—I don't want to be the, the Debbie Downer. I'm just. We have to be a little realist too. Of course, we love to do what something like that, but it doesn't seem to be a reality. And this is what this process is showing us. And that's uh, why we need to engage in this and uh, why we're doing it, plain and simple. Obviously. Tim, don't have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. I don't ask this, but Kevin, is it hard to add a new building on to this part of what we already have? Like we have a cement block classroom. You know, it would be difficult to help upgrade those buildings. You know, if you start adding on to them and, and improving them, yeah. then they're going to want you to spread them. On. Yeah, you yeah, can get code compliant stuff that get triggered by. It, it does, you know, with the different floor heights, you know, and accessibility, and, uh, you know, it's all the utility upgrades that you would need to, to put in. But what, what square footage cost are you looking at? I, I've been told to use between $500 and $800 a square foot. I, I thought it was a lot, but I'm not in tune with more efficiently. And, you know, if, if MSBA is not involved in this, then you know we can, you know, what do you? Think? We have more freedom, and flexibility to, you know, adjust the square footage. You know, the classrooms don't necessarily need to be a thousand. Is that ideal? Yes, but they be eight hundred. That, that's okay. Well, and I look at. What we probably have 600 current, so going from six to a thousand is like, whoa, we have this huge complex. <laughs> we probably don't need to go to 800, you know, or no, I mean, again, it depends on the size of our classes, but yeah, so I mean, maybe we just go through a process, we'll update this, and then maybe we can circle back around on some of these program areas to reduce them. All right, Kevin, what would your uh, best guess or educated? Knowledge of square foot price speed. Um, Pre engineered metal building, whatever. Costs have gone up recently. I don't know what's going to happen with them going back down. Um, but not anytime want. soon. Well, you never know. By the, by the time we get to the point where you're constructing, maybe we'll be at a better place. Uh, but probably 400. Do you think around 400? That's a that's, oh, uh, standard MSPA constructed building, is probably. Between four and four fifty, right? More, more open your type of environment without finished ceiling and, and that sort of. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at opportunities for saving money. You know, if we don't need a ceiling, we'll put it in. And we we'll want to put in some kind of structure. If there's quote light fixtures, if we can. Well, what, what, what I saw in, that was Bristol. Correct that facility. So, yeah. um, that was all just um, there was really no ceilings at all, and, and just open air space and and um, probably fully sprinkled, right? Yeah. And that's and then the, the roof structures we've got to upgrade, and the, and the roof insulation would have made now our thirty for code requirement. Okay. So you're able to Okay. All right. You so, answer my thing. Yeah, so the square footage number that you had gotten, where was that from? Was that from a contractor? That was from the state uh, who oversees the skills scout projects. Yeah. Okay. That's what they, according to him, that's what they would use for the projects. They have. You know, probably more recently right. up towards the higher the higher number. Uh, I think that we avoid MSBA and uh, their standards. 
you know, like I said, like we're not going to keep good standards here. Right. I'm just saying that, you know, the process of the, the MSJ, and probably set it yourself, or that's the way I took it, is it blows the costs really out of the water. And it adds a lot of red tape and potentially eliminates power and eligible of the degrees. I mean, at, at some point, you know, in addition to a design, you just have to have an OPM on board, or a large bracket manager, because the bill won't be over 1.5 million. Right, yeah. But if you have the ability to control their involvement and not have them involved in the same way that MSBA does. Okay, so it's some of these spaces that they're big, big open spaces and kind of like broken down into like tiny little rooms. So that will create some efficiency in itself. Andy, you may mention that these grants, they ask the question that the MSBA could be involved. So through that, you feel we're better off not involving them, better chance to get approved type of thing. It seems to me that the state is looking for projects that are more so let the local school whatever do their thing and not involve the bigger entity okay the grants have to be spent with two year years two year grant and we would all agree if you include in this ba it would probably Guys are comfortable opening for this school season? No. no. Okay. Um, so what's being done about that? Well, we do. I mean, I'm sure once the building's down, that'll uh, help a lot. But like, there's no electricity. There is running water right now. Um, but you know, the infrastructure for kids. We're, we're not sure where we're going to be. We know where we'd like to be, we just don't know. Well, they're gonna we be... just found out that the building's gonna be able to knock the building down, so that kind of advances things. Yeah. All right. So as long as the building's down and the and the utilities are reestablished, then they'll be working out of that that space. One of them will be in the second third classroom house where both the shop, the head house, the greenhouse, all that will be functional to start the year. That's the that's the goal. Yeah, I, had, I had had some uh, asbestos sampling done in options. He took a bunch of samples and he came back and said he could take them. So All right, I suggestion. Um, I think we need a little more discussion here internally, at least I do. Um, but I don't think we need pizza to take um, fairness to them. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very and, much. And uh, your partner, I can't remember the process. Shelby. Shelby, right? Yeah. Shelby. Thank you, Shelby. Yeah, it's a fun process, but well, I the next one, unfortunately, has one. Oh, yes. Well, it always turns bad. Thank you, Andy. Um, Before next meeting. Maybe just like us maybe some next meetings. Sure. I think that we're I'm on track for two weeks from now. Yeah, yours. Frontliner schedule is every two weeks, correct? Right? That makes sense. So we're working at August 9th. We have a commitment. The Abbott team has a, a day plan on the ninth. Okay. Are we trying to stay with Tuesdays? Yes. I think that works for yeah. the board. Yeah. 
That's the only day that I have yeah, okay. the entire okay. administrative team available. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, maybe we can have some back and forth then. You know, we get the diagram for the adjacent seats you know, of spaces, kind of put in and commented back. And hopefully we can maybe shortcut the process a little bit. So what day do you think the groups are I'd like to plan on the 16th. I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, could we do it earlier? Does that work for Tim and Mark and James? I'll be there. We'll get to that. Yeah, but okay. Um, Well, at least, I guess, yeah, that's probably the most reasonable. All right, I'm August 16th. Yep. Okay. No, no, I was just guys doing their thing. And scramble in the morning first thing. Most mornings, right? Well, try to get started before it shows up. <laughs> Good time to go on site. Right. Okay, um, I will ask a question about opening up for school. You're still working that process out. Um, when do you think you'll kind of have a plan to where they're going to be, how they're going to be, X, Y, and Z? So I still think we'll have that there. Uh, whether we take that slab out to the distribution you know, one underneath there on the we got a deck or the slab that needs to catch the electric one that wants to be able to transform it. If we're if we're planning really to take a whole thing down it almost won't be the slab. Alright, so you have some of the parts you're still figuring out. Um, yeah, I don't think it's lack of a plan. I think it's just depending oh, yeah. upon whether that building has some utilities back up or not. Well, no, I'm just really waiting on the asbestos guy, and then, then we can just go take it down. I think and then it's just in my own thought process. How are you taking it I down? think we keep the slab. In this yeah. in this scenario now, sorry, yeah, I think we keep the slab because I think you guys can, you have that backdoor access. It may be make more sense to be able to have equipment stored on the slab while we're working through this process. Right. So your stuff isn't on the one place. Um, but if that, if for some reason, the utilities aren't up and running, we have space for I think that was literally, we just disconnected that break we're off that front transformer, so we just connected the very thing not broken. So All right. We, we got both associated building right That now. was my next question. Yeah. Um, now, Joe says, at first, Joe Cook said, just go have it taken down. And then I saw him down at City Hall, because my good well did it on So, um, I'm going to talk to him one more time, so leave the slab and save his level. All right. Um, who else are you going to get? Um, I had some names, I hadn't, I didn't call any places. It, it's going to be a huge difference on the asbestos in it, so I, I just want to put All right, well, there's there's a company on Canal Street in Hoyo that does uh, abatement and demo. Yeah. Um, the whole building? I'm not sure. Uh, selective demolition, absolutely. Uh, American Environmental. Yeah. They also have sister company, United Services, or United Building Services, um, they're worth checking out. We've done a lot of work with them through the years. They're also MBE, WB, that matters at all. Probably not in our case because we're not having to meet any type of participation goals, I'm guessing, to this project. I, I didn't understand why more asbestos samples had to be taken. It's not much in that military that's drywall and paneling. Um, all that stuff, all that samples. I'll came back to that. What? Okay. I guess that's it for today. Anything else? But the other thing besides utilities is. What about furniture? We got furniture. Okay. We got lots of furniture. 
Yeah, we might have been lots of different too. Yeah. <laughs> All the stand up desk is going there. We got off. We got Did we pick up the drafting tables? Yeah. So the electrical has first dibs on these drafting tables, but you may not want them. So that you'd have drafting. Not sure if we dual purpose desk. We were able to I have at least a craft. So, so the question that I had directed to you was talking front garage, Mark's classroom, head house. Would you prefer to be in a head house or would you prefer to be? I've asked James that. I don't know if it's changed. I offered him library space, okay. library space, or prefer to be I've never in seen that area. space, but one of the things that has made us successful as a team is being close together and allowing kids to really leave education time and going to getting something ready for the day and being um, closer to that space and far away because I'm not sure this stuff should be. Um, but it would be yeah. for your first like two or three classes of the day. So yeah. I can bring you over to the space and have you look at it because we can double fill it. Uh, yes. Okay. In my mind, I, I no, work hard while I'm here. I got a first to the head house work. I got to work on the rest of the week. I'm, I'm done. <clears throat> yeah. Got a kid. I don't okay. think it's it's sort of stuff. I can take a lot. Or too many kids. Um, and then there's like in the head house, there's no place to do. Like there was a chalkboard behind the flower pool, but there's no place to do. Um, any kind of sure is what's happening. Yeah, so we have spaces. It may not be ideal, but that's the situation we're in. But we have spaces. Okay. We're not concerned about finding a home uh, for James or Mark. So it sounds like you have a vision in your head. We have possibilities. Yeah. Good. That was a concern. Thank you. Because right now, it's still a lot of stuff that we like we taken out of the part of the building's damage that it's got to get all into it. I prefer you at day of space, <laughs> to be honest, or, or um, to find another classroom. Because I think you're going to limit the capabilities of the head house and what happens. But I do understand. I want to also, if that is where you would prefer to be with Mark, and you guys can make it work, I'll honor that. I'm not going to force you to a different space. The hard part is like explorers are being just to get their mind on this kid. Do you want to head over there now? Yeah, sure. I'd like to head over. Sure.